Now I want to move on to some real-time data. And I think Don's going to like this one quite a bit, actually. Well, I've liked them all so far. So well, that's a good... So that puts pressure on you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop the ball now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ooh, what do we cool. have here, Don? Oh, this is beautiful. This is XML. It it's absolutely fast. is. This yeah. information is from San Francisco, and it's actually the bus locations in San Francisco. And as I hit refresh, you'll see that uh, some of the locations will change uh, once in a while. I think the mayor of you said San Francisco. It is. I think the mayor of San Francisco should get an I Love XML T-shirt for publishing. I think I think we can make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of things to note about this is we have the speed in here, and sometimes it's set to zero. Yeah. So uh, maybe I want to take this and not have a, just an XML view, but in a KML view. Sure. I can do that in FME. So I might want that. I'm happy with this. You're happy with XML? Yeah. Well, that's to each their own, you I suppose. Don't, you don't need a map, do you, Don? You can just no. look at the XML. And yeah, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm happy. Yeah, you can visualize it in your mind like, yeah, like the matrix. Like the matrix, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pull up Workbench here. Oh, here it comes. It's all XML these days. It is. KML itself, if you open one, is actually XML. That is true, actually. Yes. That is. So really, this is an XML uh, uh, webinar. Yes. All right. So let's take that XML. I, I, I hear it's really hard to work with XML. Is that true, Don? No, it's easy. Is it? It's okay. Easy. Yeah, if you have any XML data or KML data and you want us to you know, take a look at it, just send it our way. We're happy to. Let me grab that URL. Yeah, so I can grab it live from, from the website there. Come in here, and I, what I want to do is take, uh, take the, the <coughs> attributes and uh, the elements and flatten them down. So I'm going to use an option called Feature Pass with Attributes Flattened. And it says, well, what, what element do you want to become the, uh, the, uh, the feature? If I look back at that source data, well, I want each one of these vehicle elements to become uh, a feature. Yeah, right? that's right. So here I'm just going to enter Vehicle. Vehicle, I get that right? Yeah, okay. It would be easier if they just put bus. It's, yeah, it would be. Yeah. It would have been, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> uh, then we have the, so we're going out to Google Earth uh, KML. And what I'm going to do is come over here and let's see, let's see. Put it somewhere in, oh, anywhere is fine, I guess. Output. I'm very creative names today, output.kml. Click OK. And so right away, what does this do? Well, it simply converts in one shot. XML to KML, but you know, starting out, maybe I want to make it look a little nicer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I need to do, since it's not spatial at this point, is yeah. take the lat and the long value, the lat and the long value, yeah. and turn that into spatial data. Yeah. So I'm going to use a 2D point adder yeah. over here, bring in some data, uh, the attributes, set to an attribute value. I always get this wrong, and this is the what is it again there, Don? Yeah. It's lawn. Yeah, okay, you thank say, you. Uh, yeah, flat lawn. Yeah, if you go the other way, it, it views yeah. very strangely. And one time I was doing a presentation, and two people in the audience got into a heated discussion about whether <laughs> lat was X or Y. And anyway, that wasn't the point I was trying to make, so now I just <laughs> rename them whenever I do demos. Enjoy that. And one thing about FME is, is it doesn't know <laughs> what that coordinate system coming in is. So to go to KML, it wants to ensure it's lat long, so I use that's because the source center. data set did not tell us, correct? That's right. XML doesn't always, uh, it's not always uh, self-describing. Yes, it was, but that's not a prop fault of XML, we should be clear. No, XML is, is amazing. <laughs> uh, and then we want to maybe uh, show, the, show the values a little bit uh, different, so we want to style them. But if they're stopped, we want them to show with green, or with red, I should say. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to this tester transformer, and we're going to say if the speed, where are we, speed is greater, let's see if I can do this here, greater than 0, 0.0, then it's moving. So then we want to style it like so, KML styler, huh, like so. Yeah, Come in here, we're going to make it uh, green perhaps. Yeah. Uh -huh. Green for go. Green for go. Yeah. And then we're also going to have another styler. I'll just copy it and paste it below, yeah. which will be basically if they're stopped. So it's going to be red, I'm guessing. Uh, very good, very good. Maybe even an octagon. Okay. Like a stop sign. Like a stop sign. Wow. Wow. I'm impressed. And then Mark, did, Mark set the name of this output uh, using a direct uh, connection there. But there is a transformer you can use, KML Property Setter, <clears throat> which will actually allow us to give the name to those, uh, those icons. So in the name, I'm going to set that to, 
well, the vehicle ID. Click OK, and then I can run this and everything. Um, but what I want to do, I, I'll go ahead and run it, but what I want to do is get this on the FME <coughs> server so that I can refer, keep asking for this data over and over again. So when you run this, it's actually pulling the live data across the web. So even on the desktop, you're not restricted to working with flat files or that's databases right. that are local. You can still right. consume internet resources. Absolutely. And so, but, but to be able to have this transformation happen every couple seconds or something yeah. like that, yeah. I need to get it into somewhere where that can happen. So I'm going to publish it to an FME server, and I'm going to use localhost, and admin, admin. That's a great machine, localhost. Localhost is good. Publish it up there, and, you know, I give it a name, hello, because I'm really creative. Wow. And then I'm actually going to do a bait and switch and then use a different uh, demo to show you end result. Publish it up there and I want to register it with the KML network link service. That's what I'm going to use. So it's up on FME server. Now I'm actually going to go and I'm going to show you the output of that. Just flip to the uh, already got server open. You got a server open? Very good. Mark is, is prepared. Go. Very good, very good. I'm actually going to go to a different URL, that's fine. Okay. Just just to be okay, here you clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Give you some time. So we're getting close to time, so if you can type a bit faster, that would be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to jump it up there. Okay, so here we've got the the buses. I'm going to hit run on this camel network link. It's going to prompt me. That's going to open up in Google Earth, and let's, go, let's jump to the top. Uh -huh. Double click this network link. <clears throat> Over to San Francisco. Over to San Francisco. It zooms in. And it gives me green and red, and this thing refreshes every couple seconds. So this is what's happening in San Francisco right now. Right now, this is what's happening. Now, uh, just the last demo, what if I wanted to actually show the orientation of these? Sure. Because that's an XML, one of the XML elements or attributes. Yeah. Um, you can see that right. Well, I won't bother showing it. But you'd add another transformer, change the icon to basically point in the right direction kind of thing? Exactly, exactly. And then what you would get is something that looks more like that. Wow. Where it would actually show which way you're going. Now, how are we doing on time, Mark? Do, we have, do you need to be wrapping up? About wrapping up two minutes ago. Yeah. About two minutes ago. Yes. Well, I will uh, wrap it up then, I think, or should I show one more? I think uh, we're, we're, we're good. What were you going to show? I was going to show the street intersection. Uh, okay. Well, let's show it. Sure. So that takes one minute, right? It's better to be showing demos. Yeah. I think so. That's so. right, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to show, basically, this is how you can uh, load bigger oh, so data volumes. So Absolutely. Here. We have some privacy concerns apparently, but that's okay, fine. Yeah. No, that's just me being paranoid on my computer. Okay, well, better yeah. safe than Mark sorry. Has that for, it has FMEpedia flagged. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, you so go have here. Everything flagged. I trust nobody. So there's a demo on here that allows you to load in some bigger data sets. Let's run it live. And what it does, just to be clear, is it actually loads uh, all the data in there and then only asks for a refresh of that data. So let's zoom over here. Let's zoom in. Now as things change, the information gets updated. So this is almost like a dashboard where you can see the, the current things that are happening. Okay, so um, this is all the intersections in some city? Yeah, yeah, Interopolis, okay. Austin, Texas. Okay, and only when data is changed is it sent? Only when data is changed, yeah. Okay. So it doesn't ask for the entire data set every time. Okay. That's right. Okay. Well, that's I got to wrap up now, folks. Yeah. But um, I'm going to hand it back over to mm -hmm. Mark at this point. Okay. Great.